The Iranians have also threatened to close the Strait of Hormuz, the narrow opening to the Persian Gulf that tankers use to carry about 20 percent of the world's oil. Iran has warned the U.S. to keep the Navy out of there, but today a battle group led by the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln crossed through the Strait and into the Gulf. Because of what's at stake, we put Alan Pizzi on one of the ships, the guided missile cruiser Cape St. George. The Cape St. George's 500-strong crew are on full alert, eyes and ears on everything that floats. Helicopters patrol the flanks. The Iranian Navy is no match for the vast firepower of the Americans, but they're not helpless, Captain Don Gabrielson says. Well, the biggest concern out here is just the number of uh, small, fast attack craft that the Iranians uh, have built up over the last 20 years. They, they have you know, a couple thousand of them available. More than 17,000 tankers ply this 60-mile long waterway every year, and every one of them is vulnerable to Iranian gunboats, anti-ship missiles, and other threats. The waterway is clogged with maritime commerce, tankers, cargo ships, fishermen, and smugglers, among which the Iranians can hide suicide bomb speedboats, which is why gunner's mate Richard Gullickson is manning a 50 caliber machine gun. We're looking for small boats and aircrafts, anything that may be getting close to us. The idea is to keep everyone in line without overheating the situation. This passage was business as usual. You know, usual here means that there's always some level of tension. And there's always some level of friction between the, uh, everybody that's in the neighborhood. Iranian Navy ships regularly come close to check out the Americans. This one made everyone nervous because it looked like it might have missiles on board. Captain Gabrielson decided the worrisome tubes were in fact exhaust pipes and a crane. Then came an Iranian plane on a reconnaissance mission. Routine in a place where everyone is watching each other. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, aboard the USS Cape St. George.